Another simple idea to implement is to make sure that uh, to, to make sure that we don't create a dystopia worse than Terminator Salvation, uh, which is the <laughs> yeah. If you don't know which one Terminator Salvation is, it is the cinema where uh, Christian Bale yells at you for two hours uh, and then makes you <laughs> apologize to him. So <laughs> <laughs> that one. If, if we don't if we don't want to see something worse than that. Uh, we could implement worker co-ops, right? Worker co-ops mean that workers own and direct the company rather than having a, a hierarchy of managers and senior managers, and district managers, and senior district managers, and regional managers, and uh, senior regional managers, and global. I feel like you guys get it. You guys get the point of there's too many managers out there. This idea has actually been utilized by several companies all across the globe, right? The largest of these examples is a Spanish corporation called Mondragon, which currently employs over 100,000 people with a family of over 250 worker co-ops within its various industries that they're a part of, from retail, industrial sale, construction, and medical research. The best example of successful worker co-op in the world right now is something called the Mondragon Corporation. This is a, a corporation in Spain, started in 1956 with a Catholic priest and six workers in a poor northwestern corner of uh, Spain. And this priest made a funny joke one Sunday in church, and he said to his parish, if we wait for capitalists to come down here to, to, to employ us as working people, we will all die of old age before it happens. Everybody laughed. And then he, then he delivered the punchline, which was, let's not wait, let's become our own employers. In other words, let's set up a co-op, which he did in this little town of Mondragon in northern Spain. Okay, fast forward to right now, 2017. Uh, it is the seventh largest corporation in all of Spain. It employs over 100,000 workers. Uh, it is run by those workers who own it, who operate it, who direct it. They are a family of about 250 individual co-ops producing all kinds of goods and services. These worker co-ops also democratize the workplace, right? That means vo workers vote on contract renewals of the managers. Once a year, there's an, I mean, they meet more often, but once a year, there's a big assembly and they decide whether to renew the contracts of the managers they hire. In other words, instead of the managers hiring the workers, it's the workers who hire them. Just try to get your head around that. I'll give you another example. They voted that the highest paid worker in Mondragon cannot get more than eight times the lowest paid worker. Well, in the United States, the, the CEOs get 300 times what the lowest paid workers do, just to give you an idea. They don't have the inequality that we have, and here's a simple way they've solved that problem. Yeah, CEOs are making at minimum 300 times more than the lowest paid employee, and fucking nobody knows what a CEO does, right? Except maybe it's like wear suits and talk shit on the poor and... I don't know, like occasionally emails. have emails. Emails, they do, they do some emails, and uh, I guess sometimes they also have parties with sexual deviants that get suicided. They also do that. That's fun for them to do, I guess. And a lot of cocaine. And a, a lot of cocaine. A lot of cocaine. Yeah, they got that cocaine money. They got that good cocaine money. <laughs> Look, a company like Mondragon is also doing so well that it has the ability to set up its own university to help employees and average students figure out how to run their own co-ops and then teach them about the advancements in technologies within all the industries that they work in. Not only does Mondragon grow and is it a successful corporation, but it has set up its own university to train people on how to run co-ops, full curriculum, I've been there, I've met those professors, um, and they've also set up their own laboratories to do research to come up with new products or to techniques. And two American companies were so taken with the quality of their scientific research that they pay Mondragon to allow their American engineers 
to work alongside them in their laboratories there in Spain. And I thought people watching or listening to the program might be interested to know that the names of those two American corporations are Microsoft and General Motors. Yeah. Look, capitalist Never corporations. Never heard of them. Never, yeah, just a small, <laughs> you guys know the family business of Microsoft and General Motors? <laughs> Here's the thing, capitalist corporations don't do that, right? Capitalist corporations don't help people. They don't do worker co-ops. They just, they put a, a photo of, of the CEO and then they make you pledge allegiance to them and then tell you that, uh, you know, unions will suck the soul of your babies. Uh, it's primarily what American corporations, and American corporations don't allow Asian or European corporations to work within our labs or offices. Right? Mostly because European and Asian corporations aren't looking to downgrade their employees. You know, in reality, American individualism with the greed and competitive nature of capitalism has made America very unappealing. And it seems like the people that are making America great again are the Spanish. Yeah, it's that old <laughs> adage. You guys remember that very old adage? No one expects the Spanish corporations <laughs> they're not all gonna be gold people <laughs> sometimes the jokes are just for me you guys don't need to be involved <laughs> not what i wrote <laughs> specifically for myself i i know the words to that song well, <laughs> i do <laughs> Look at a capitalist driven education system like ours, the notion of worker co ops aren't even discussed, right? Hell, the idea of co ops in general aren't discussed. I didn't know there were grocery store co ops till I was like 28, you know? Look, saying that there's only one way to conduct business is assuming that there is only one type of intersection in the world, right? Some of them are going to be kind of easy. Some of them are gonna be a little bit complicated. Sometimes it looks complicated, but in reality is like super easy. Uh, and sometimes it's just a pile of spaghetti. <laughs> Once again, that is a map of Boston we're looking at there. This is a, a real topographical map of the city of Boston, Massachusetts, you guys. <laughs> guys, Mondragon went from a six-person co-op in 1956 to 100,000 and more employees. And they're self-aware and not greedy, so they talk about whether if that's too large and uh, for, for, for a corporation to sustain something like this, right? So they talk about selling portions of their companies directly back to their employees. And if you're wondering, how would these workers afford to buy an entire corporation? It can be done so pretty easily through public banks and churches. Uh, local churches that see a commitment to the community and to the parishes they serve as including raising money. And that gives you a new ally. Capitalist corporations are more concerned about how much profit they made and, I don't know, what rare animal they can hunt and eat for the sport of it, you know? <laughs> most capitalists are just like maybe this, maybe I'll eat a platypus this week a, a platypus that's stuffed inside of a duck you know bring <laughs> bring me a ductopus <laughs> <laughs> and guys that is neither logical nor Christian okay I'm pretty sure Jesus was a pescatarian <laughs> and Eating a ductopus is probably some kind of cardinal sin. That's got to be somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Yeah, how can you eat? It? How can you eat a poor platypus? You know, right, it's, it's got a tail of a beaver. It's got a tail of a beaver, a bill of a duck. I mean, you know, it's it's not his fault that he's yeah. a freak of nature. But let's show him already mercy. Already hates you know? him. <laughs> like God already doesn't like the platypus. Leave it alone, billionaires. Here's the reality, right? Worker co-ops will completely change the way that we look at work in our culture. It won't be a passive relationship with employment as something we do to buy more shit, but rather something we do to fulfill our lives, better our communities, and the world around us. Now, with automation in mind, worker co-ops would ensure when there's less employment and if your job is replaced, you are still taken care of by the community you worked alongside. 
I mean, worker co-ops are basically like friends you work with that would also help you move just because they like you. <laughs> it's kind of a big fucking deal, you guys. <laughs> and that's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please make sure you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out about this episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, it is very likely that topics like this are uh, highly censored. They don't go out to as many people as you think they would go out to. So if you tr if you are watching it on those platforms, please make sure you hit the like and the share. It helps me reach uh, more people on that platform. If you're watching this on a different platform, if you're watching this on my Rockfin page, thank you so much, and I hope you consider following me on Rockfin. And if you're not on Rockfin, I highly go go check out Rockfin.com. Uh, they are a crypto blockchain. Uh, website that's kind of like Netflix for content creators. They, if for ten bucks a month, you can uh, check out all of the premium content that every single content per, uh, creator on Rockfin puts out, including myself. You got Graham Elwood, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Hardlands Media. Uh, you got Action for Assange. You got Nico House, Kim Iverson. A ton of folks are on. Uh, Rockfin. So if you are a political junkie, if you like political commentary, if you like political uh, uh, journalism and, and commentary, that's the site for you to go. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, live virtual shows all throughout the fall into the uh, into the, the winter as well. Uh, it's part of the way that I'm earning my income now that I'm not a full-time touring comedian due to the pandemic. So if you want to come to one of these live virtual shows, you can do so by going to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. Thank you to all the sustaining members that watch this uh, every single week. I really appreciate it. Till next week, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you on the road.